Vandiyathevan entered the entrance and went down a few steps. Then it was level ground, the light was very faint. He went 10 to 15 feet. I heard a sound like a cartwheel turning. Suddenly darkness came and engulfed him. He thought that he had resolved many times not to interfere in irrelevant matters. What did we set out to do? How important is it? Instead of that, have we now entered this tunnel? Where does this lead? What? What kinds of dangers await there? What an ignorant thing we have gotten ourselves into. When is our quick wit going to leave us? These thoughts slowed his feet. Thinking that he might turn back, he returned the way he had come, the steps were knocked. But missing the hole at the top, tried it to no avail. Someone must have covered the hole from above. Vandiyathevan was sweating profusely. And frantically, he tried to open the closed hole. Meanwhile, somewhere in the far distance, a voice seemed to be heard, other voices were heard. Perhaps it was the voice of men speaking at the gate of the Enr temple from where he entered the gateway. Did I tump and carry light the lamp expecting someone? They might have arrived, and if this was true he would find a way to open the portal and escape might go horribly wrong. I don't know how long they sat there and talked. I tump and carry's accomplices Ravidasan and other conspirators may have been talking for a long time. Why are they gathered here? What are they talking about? What are they plotting? That Vera Vaishnava will take care of all this. It is better to go a little further up and see, than to stand here waiting for breath and sweating. It's a descent that's a dare, isn't it better to find out where this tunnel leads? Rather than standing around sweating it out, it's better to go a little further up and see. It's a descent that's a dare, isn't it better to find out where this tunnel leads? Rather than standing around sweating it out, it's better to go a little further up and see. It's a descent that's a dare, isn't it better to find out where this tunnel leads? Having made this decision, Vandiyathevan put his hind leg forward again and started walking. Even though the bottom was level, it was still rugged. The rock must have been quarried and the underpass constructed. An intention had appeared in his mind as to where that path would lead. Probably it should end up in the Sambuvarayar mansion of Kadampur. Where does it end up in that mansion? Maybe end up in the treasure room or the palace where the palace maids live. He knew that such tunnels existed from palaces where kings and princes resided. In times of danger, if there is a chance to escape from the palace, they use such paths. Such paths normally end at the temple because it is necessary to dispose of the palace pendur. Since it is necessary to carry important treasures, those routes usually go through the treasure dungeon. Where does this path end? Since I Tump and Carry has come and gone this way, he can probably end up in the treasure room. It seems that just as these men are looting the treasures of the great Pula Vetariar through the younger Rani without his knowledge, they have planned to loot the treasure of Sambuvarayar too. What is the reason for them entering into such a thing on this occasion when Adita Kari Kalar and others are coming as guests? Could there possibly be some other purpose? Vandiyathevan remembered what he had seen and heard in the Tiruparambayam school. The long sword engraved with the symbol of the fish that belonged to the Queen of Palvur came before his mind's eye and flashed for a moment. Vandiyathevan felt sick. They may have even more sinister intentions than looting treasure. Knowing for sure where this route leads can help prevent their deadly purpose from being accomplished. It was only a few minutes after I started walking down the tunnel but it seemed like a long time because of the dark passage. Suffocated for want of air, and sweating. When he thought how far the Kadampur mansion was from the Enr temple he was at first confused but then he thought again. From the front door of the mansion, through winding streets and then forest paths, it seemed so far away. Enr temple is not far from the back of the palace. If an arrow is shot from a bow, it will be far enough to fall. If that is true, he must have come close to the outer wall of the palace by now. Yes, just like that, from somewhere above suddenly a cold wind blew on Vandiyathevan. The wind revived Vandiyathevan, who was sweating profusely and fainting. He looked up, a little light was visible high up in the distance. Voices were also heard. 
it must have been one of the bastions on top of the wall to be guarded by soldiers. Provision should be made for ventilation of the tunnel through it. But Vandiyadeva saw that there was no facility for people to descend or ascend except the wind. The thought of entering the palace of Kadampur and the cool breeze blowing on him from above refreshed him and gave him new enthusiasm. The destination of the subway will be in the near future. Could it be a treasure dungeon? Like the great Pulvatarayar, Sambhavarayar keeps a lot of pearls, corals, gems, diamonds, and gold coins? Could there be a skeleton of a dead man lying among those piles of riches as seen there? Can spider webs on gold coins? Vandiyathevan, who was thinking like this, was startled by something knocking on his leg. Then he realized that it was a staircase and gained courage. Yes, once you climb that staircase, you will surely find a treasure dungeon. If not, it could be a place where women live, then it's a danger. Cow. Kanamaran's younger sister Manameka lie. That brunette beauty will be there. Vandiyadevan smiled as he thought that he once had the idea of marrying her. There was no one there to enjoy that smile. Perhaps if a Purathu Matar suddenly appeared among them at a time of chaos. He laughed at the thought of this. The second he smiled, he saw a sight of horror that made his body's blood freeze, his heart stop beating, and his eyes twitch. He climbed the stairs didn't he? When he set foot on the top step, realizing that there was no more step to climb, he looked around to see where we had come. A hundred predatory eyes stared at him. All those eyes were the eyes of terrible wild beasts. In the first panic, he tried to go back the way he had come. But we will find a way later. As soon as he stepped on it, he heard something behind him. It seems that the tunnel has closed itself. But what kind of horror is this? So many wild animals are waiting for him here. Bengal tigers, leopards, lions, bears, wild buffaloes, wolves, foxes, rhinos. There are two elephants. Is everything ready to pounce on itself? Why is it still not flowing? Aho, such a huge hawk. Alas! That giant owl. Man swallows bat. Is it just a dream? Or what is this? Is there a crocodile lying here? Lying with his mouth agape, baring his monstrous teeth? Does the crocodile live in the water? Isn't it just plain old? How did this crocodile come among the wild animals? Mom! I survived! Vandiyathevan blurted out. He realized that all the animals that surrounded him were not living animals. I remembered what Kanthamaran had said that the Sambhavarayar clans were fond of hunting. I remembered when Kanamaran said that there was a hunting hall in the palace where some of the animals that the dynasty had hunted and killed were skinned and stuffed with fluff and straw and kept like live animals. Vandiyathevan came to know that he had just arrived in the hunting hall. But it took some time for the initial panic-induced body tremors to subside. Then each animal went closer and looked. He touched it, shook it, stepped on it. He knew for sure that those animals had no life. Then, he thought of what to do. The way it came has closed automatically. Reinventing it and going the way it came from? Or find out in which part of the Kadamper mansion this Hall of Terror is located? Trying to figure out if there's a way from here to any other room? He walked around looking for a door somewhere in the walls. There is no obvious door. He kept touching and knocking on the walls to no avail. As time passed, Vandiyathevan became increasingly angry. Anger came with fury. As he was walking around the walls, he saw the face of an elephant attached to the wall with its tusks and tusks. Wretched elephant! Didn't you move and put me in this prison? He scolded the elephant. The elephant did not speak a living elephant does not speak. What will an elephant do when stuffed with lifeless fibers and husks? It was idle, not even swaying the hymn. What am I asking you, are you speechless? Saying that, Vandiyadeva took hold of the elephant's tusks and screwed a screw. The next second the magic happened. When the tusk was screwed, the ear of the elephant attached to the wall moved. Not only did it move, but it also moved. 
there was a big hole in the wall. Vandiyathevan stretched his face close to the hole and peered in with great surprise. A woman's face was seen there. It was the face of a young woman, the face of a beautiful dark-skinned woman. Both the big eyes on that face were wide awake, surprise! Surprise! Vandiyathevan saw his own face near the woman's face. Vandiyathevan looked at his face and the girl's face in the same way that a woman would bring her face closer to her boyfriend when he wanted to kiss her. The woman's eyes, which were already wide awake, now widened even more, showing unspeakable astonishment. Surprise and a little fear were reflected in the pride. For a moment the woman's face looked like that. The next moment she piled up her crimson petals and shouted goo. She shouted. Vandiyadeva was suddenly struck with horror. He took his hands from the ivory in horror. In the next moment the elephant became an elephant and the wall became a wall. We will see the fountain and we will see the woman. The woman's voice, coo, which pierced her ears like a beetle, was not heard. It took some time for Vandiyadeva's chest to subside. He pondered over the sight he had seen.